table clues that you have. What's going on guys, here in Le Brassou at the Hotel de Ologel, and it is a momentous occasion indeed. It is the 75th birthday of the legend of independent watchmaking, Mr. Philippe Dufour, almost as legendary as my friend Nick Fox, who's standing just right here. How are you, sir? Very good. Way, it's great to be here, isn't it? Monsieur, we feel, I feel genuinely privileged, don't you? I do as well, you know, and, and when you look around the room, you see who's been invited. It's people who have all, in some ways, made a contribution to watchmaking. Would and you? uh, you've got some real legends here as well. You have the father of Guillaume Charge. Kerry Vutelainen, I mean, they're just Jean Claude, obviously. I mean, they're all here. It's fantastic. Mr. Siddiqui as well. Mr. Siddiqui, yeah. what more could one want? Can we, we should probably just for uh, briefly mention that we love Daniela Dufour as well. We she, was a, she was the great star of the jury um, last year at the GPHG, and this year I put her onto the one of the panels at the. FT Business of Luxury Conference, and she again performed absolutely in a stellar manner. One of the funniest moments in the GPHG last year was we were going around the room talking about watches, and one watchmaker, who will not be named, said, oh, look at Recep's watch. It reminds me of Philip Dufour. Yes. And, and then Daniela raised her hand and said, actually, I disagree. I didn't think she said it. I think she sort of said it in a, in a very sort of oratund and or oratorical manner. I mean, it was, it was a definite, I mean, she, she, she gave him good five to ten minutes of why it wasn't at all anything like Philippe Dufour. But with like elegance, class and a great smile and so he... He it, won't be forgetting it in a hurry, <laughs> that's for sure. And it was a good lesson, I mean it was, it, it just shows this is about the detail of watchmaking and it's about not making glib assumptions based upon superficialities, not that this was that at all. <laughs> not at all, but it's also an amazing demonstration of how dynamic she is and I think uh, potentially will be a great leader to carry on the name Philippe Dufour for the future. What do you think, Nick? I think so, Way, but I always agree with you, as you know, because you're far cleverer than I am. So guys, uh, join us for the festivities. I think there's a big announcement happening, so stay tuned. Thank you, Nick. Way, thank you. You're the best, sir. Mr. Beaver, you are probably the great, greatest and most iconic figure in watchmaking today. You know, you've achieved so much over so many decades. But today we're here to celebrate another legend named Philippe Dufour. How did you get to know him and what do you think is his contribution to horology? I got to know him in 1973 when I joined AP. And he was working at AP. And in those days I was living even here. So every day, not every day, some days, we were walking together, going to the factory. So he was the genius and I was the student. Uh, today his contribution is just enormous because it's not a marketing contribution, it's an image contribution. And he has given to the Swiss watch art substance, the substance. And Philippe Dufour, he is the man of substance. We, we owe absolutely everything to Philippe. Uh, we all of us, in the, but we were just talking with Kari uh, a few minutes ago. He opened the way for us in the early 90s, mid 90s. Um, he actually has been predicating for all of us one day to actually exist. We would not be standing here, all of us, if he hadn't done what he did. On top of being such a nice gentleman, such a passionate gentleman, somebody who's never um, strayed from his values, whatever in his highs and his lows. He's always been humble, passionate. Um, we love him. We have a huge respect for Philippe. Uh, he has been like a icebreaker for the independence, breaking the ice and open the open the sea for us. Because uh, when he started, nobody did knew about independent watchmaking. And uh, he was a pioneer on that. Ah, bah, j'aime beaucoup la philosophie de Philippe, de faire le mieux possible comme on le faisait au départ. C'est une philosophie que j'appréciais dès le début, quand on a décidé de faire quelque chose nous. Et c'est pour moi vraiment un exemple fantastique. En plus, maintenant ces pièces sont, sont plus des montres, mais ça devient des œuvres d'art. 
ce qui est absolument fantastique pour l'horlogerie. Il est une légende dans la industrie de la voiture. Donc, nous, en tant que Siddiqui, la famille, nous respectons un grand respect pour M. Dufour. Je pense que c'est une célébration aussi de la Suisse Excellence. Uh, Philippe est un kind of, uh, icône pour la Suisse um, Excellence et il est l'un des meilleurs ambassadeurs de nos valeurs, de nos Suisse Valeurs. Innovation, créativité, um, aussi la tradition, this uh, by boundage entre la tradition et l'innovation, qui est extrêmement important aujourd'hui. So is a iconic figure. He's the Picasso of the uh, watch industry. Um, and he has inspired um, all the generations. Uh, and it's, it, it is interesting to see that he has inspired um, Uh, the traditional watchmaking and also the contemporary um, watchmaking. He brought extraordinary finishing uh, to the world of independent watchmaking. Uh, he uh, made a business of it. He went out on his own. Uh, you know, he abandoned making pieces under the the Audemars Piguet name and and struck out on his own and inspired a whole generation of independents. I mean, there's so many things. Uh, our group was talking the other day about you know who will be historically important to the world of watchmaking 100 years from now, and uh, you could throw, start throwing out names, but Philippe Dufour is definitely on that list. We discovered uh, uh, finishing and watchmaking school together, and it was always a challenge for us to make the best parts, uh, etc. And uh, we asked our teacher, uh, for you, who is the best uh, at this? Because, you know, we were uh, uh, 16 years old back then, um, and he told us, yeah, it's Philippe Dufour, and say, Who? <laughs> you know, <laughs> it was 2008. Uh, he showed me, I was like, wow, that's so beautiful. And uh, for me, I, uh, I kept the idea that um, uh, you say, finishing is incredible. I want to get the same finishing. So for me, uh, Philippe Dufour uh, pushed me to try the best finishing ever uh, uh, on my work. And we can see it, it's spectacular. And how about for you, sir? Yeah, Philippe Dufour for me, he took, he took so many risks back then when. Uh, There wasn't many much uh, independence, and uh, I think he deserves what he has today. And uh, I'm very glad to see uh, to be here first. I'm very honored to be invited here and to see uh, what he become became now. He remained very human, very open to uh, to these young watchmakers and not so young watchmakers. And I think, yeah, it's uh, uh, only somebody with a very big heart and a very human dimension can do that. Well, I think he's the guy that started it all, independent watchmaking. Uh, perhaps with a few other ones, but he's, he was certainly one of the first to put his name as a, as a small watchmaker in his own workshop. He, had to, he was the first guy to have the balls to print his uh, name on the dial. Absolutely. Would you agree? There's a testicular I totally agree. He's a li living legend and he's like the godfather of watchmaking. The example that he put down with the work that he's done, I mean, in terms of the level of the, the superlative level that he's reached when it comes to finishing decorating when I think about those things I think about Mr. Dufour I think like his stamp is <laughs> you know but then again you think about his imprint in the world with the simplicity and how people love it how they revere it how they respect it you see how it's moved in the market you see the lane that it opens for other independents you know for me he's opened a lot of doors and he's inspired a lot of, of ways trains of thought that I never would have had if he wasn't there so he's inspired me a great deal and this is why I feel like it's uh, quite an honor to be in his presence. No one has, has done more in Switzerland to set the scene for the rise of independent watchmaking that we're now seeing today than Philippe Dufour. He is the grandfather of Swiss independent watchmaking in my opinion. The man is, a, is, a, is an historically important figure as you know I mean he single-handedly Restore, well, not single-handedly quite, but I like to exaggerate, but he, but he restored that appreciation for the sort of values now that one sees being adopted by all these young hotshots who sort of... But, but he does it, he does it with, the, with reason and with care and with balance. I mean, it's not... It's not I mean, because I find so many of some... No, I find some of these watches now, you're, you're, you're admiring the finishing, 
it's it's sort of every conceivable finishing loaded onto one timepiece, whereas he f uses finishing in the judicious way, and that's the beauty of it. It's the balance. It's the symmetry. It's the elegance. It's a discretion. Like the man himself, he just loves making watches. Uh, I think there's a very nice parallel in that you've just created your own brand with your son, working side by side with with him. Um, and Mr. Dufour is also now working with Daniela, right? Uh, so two generations working side by side as well. What do you think is so meaningful about this opportunity to work with your child? It's the dream of every papa, of every man, I think. The dream is to work together with your daughter or with your son in order that you can transfer knowledge to your family, that you can transmit the art, your visions. And that is very important for a man because that gives us the impression that our life has a sense. The life is there in order to give back. And giving back is the biggest privilege you can have as long as you're alive. Since a couple of years, I started to have more women in the in the business. It's it's a pleasure. I mean, maybe it's 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 in, in in many levels. One level, of course, because it's nice that the kids are uh, with you. So that's of course it's nice to to see them. And of course, when you can share the the same passion, it's it's even more better. We are here today to celebrate the 75th birthday on this day of a person who embodies the spirit of La Vallée, a person who knew how to define his line and cultivate his independence, someone who knew how to stick to it despite times that were not always easy, someone who knew how to respect the watchmaking tradition by adding his own little touch. More than deserved, I'm very happy that he and his family are finally able to enjoy it. C'est avec un immense plaisir que je te demande, Philippe, de bien vouloir me rejoindre sur cette scène. Mais comme le dit l'adage, derrière tout grand homme se trouve une grande femme. Du coup, Elisabeth, je te demande également de venir vous rejoindre. Mon Philippe, tu es intègre. Tu ne te laisses pas influencer indûment par les autres. Ta force et ta détermination face aux obstacles sont plus exceptionnel et tu agis toujours un homme intègre et fier de ses valeurs quelle que soit la situation mon mari m'inspire à devenir une femme meilleure et quand nous sommes ensemble tout devient possible Léo, depuis que je t'ai rencontré tu n'as cessé de m'étonner avec ta faculté de préparer des grands événements derrière mon dos Et cette soirée, il y en a la preuve. Et c'est avec plein d'émotions que j'y participe. Grâce à ton caractère bien trempé, tu arrives toujours à tes fins. Je t'aime, ma petite Léo. J'ai la fierté de vous annoncer la création de notre fondation humanitaire. Nous sommes tous conscients que le monde est en difficulté, que les inégalités économiques se creusent, que la pauvreté augmente chaque jour et que les écosystèmes diminuent à une vitesse alarmante. Je suis convaincu que nous pouvons réussir dans cette nouvelle entreprise, bien que nous sachions que nous ne pouvons pas changer le monde seul. Nous montrons la voie. Nous sommes au début de cette aventure difficile. C'est pourquoi nous avons besoin de votre soutien pour aider les personnes en grande précarité. En unissant nos forces, nous pourrons réaliser notre mission. Ensemble, nous pouvons faire une différence et avoir un impact positif sur la vie des plus vulnérables. Afin d'utiliser notre engagement, j'ai mis à disposition de la Fondation l'un de mes garde-temps Simplicité en version unique, ainsi que quelques œuvres d'art qui seront mises aux enchères à la fin de cette année. Les fruits de la vente serviront à lancer opérationnellement notre Fondation. Cette initiative témoigne de notre engagement envers cette juste et noble cause et nous suggérons qu'elle encouragera d'autres personnes à se joindre à nous dans cette mission. 
Nous avons besoin de votre aide pour atteindre notre objectif. Merci de votre attention et j'espère que vous vous joindrez à nous pour faire une différence positive dans le monde. Daniela, je t'invite à venir aussi pour dévoiler quelque chose d'un peu spécial. nice to be here and it's super nice to be here with you Wei and with you Austin. Yeah, I mean this is a phenomenal event, you know we're in the middle of the valley and we're in this transparent tent with the sun shining on us, you know, what could be better with amazing people from the industry, so very happy to be here. And how awesome is it that Daniela Dufour is singing behind Crazy, us? right? Crazy! What a voice, what a voice! Tell me a bit, what did you learn from Philippe Dufour? Oh, uh, oh many things, the, the first thing maybe this is the spirit the spirit of the freedom, of the independence. And uh, it all in my move, I search the perfect move. The, the, the work is perfect. And, uh, don't have the, the middle, the middle <laughs> things with Philip, yes. Mark, you actually used to work with Philip. Tell us what that experience was like. It was an excellent school. I learned a lot. It was a tough time, but it was a life-changing experience, I would say. Every person in this room, I think he has one of the most special relationships with Philippe Dufour. Romain, you're now an independent watchmaking a legend in your own right. But tell me a little bit about what is so meaningful about your relationship with Philippe Dufour. You know, the place that we live is, uh, is not a vibrant place. It's really something that uh, related with uh, the simplicity. Probably, you know, the name of the simplicity is maybe belongs to the Valley de Joux in a certain way. And um, the relation that, that, that we have is in that sense. From your perspective, tell me, what is Philippe Devore's contribution to watchmaking? Uh, it's phenomenal. I mean, the uh, watchmaking industry owes him so much, and especially many of the watchmakers that we see rising today. He's been always helpful, sharing, counseling people, and that is something that, you know, in this industry we always talk about, you know, the secrets and so forth, but he's on the opposite side of that because he knows that if you don't share the knowledge, unfortunately that knowledge cannot pass away. Moi ce que j'apprécie chez Philippe, c'est de voir comme il a fait son chemin tout seul, sans se prendre la tête, sans euh, créer une, une grosse marque, une grosse usine, une grosse boîte, avec, aux côtés de sa femme, et, et avec sa fille, et j'essaye de faire la même chose avec ma femme et mon fils. I think he actually was the first one to really open everyone's eyes into high, high uh, hot horology essentially and he also created the auction market that is incredible now and also brought up a bunch of other independents with him and he's the benchmark. People say, oh, the next Philippe Dufour, you don't say that about anyone else. Philippe, for me, will be, it's the last one, it's the true and honest vision of what means, you know, working for a life for something with a true passion and um, an understanding it's incredible how you know that he has seen so many things and he still continued to keep going and to understand and accept 
the evolution of things. He's so serious in puncture. と思ったらものすごい複雑な時作り出したんで、あの話を聞いてびっくりしました。But at the same time, he's very complicated movement maker. うん、だからやっぱ時計の世界っていうのはすごい奥が深いんだなと思って。So I see the depth of the watchmaking world. でまあその彼みたいな人がまあ作り続けてくれないと時計の世界はちょっと困ったことになるなと。思ってたらまあ、でもそのパレニティーはやっぱりすごいなと思いま So, the person that everyone refers to as the godfather of independent watchmaking, the gentleman who created the very first Grand Petit Sonorius watch. He created the first duality watch with two escapements、uh, with the results averaged through a differential. He created the most beautifully finished watch ever created, the Simplicite. Philippe Dufour, how are you, sir? Yeah, I'm fine. And it's,、uh, I have a lot of pleasure tonight, you know, spending time with、uh, friends, with、uh, watch lovers from all over the world. Tell me a little bit about Leo and what she's brought to your life. Watch, watch, watch. So much, so much.、Uh, she helped me to probably to, to carry, to fight. You know, because you know, when you take、uh, the age,、uh, sometimes you, you know. But she's younger than me, and that's helped me to, to, stay, to, to stay young. That's why I'm wearing some pink stuff today. I love, I love it. Because she told me, you have to do that. Okay. <laughs> you were the first one to really courageously take it upon yourself to do it with no financial backing, but just your own. Yes, it was my, it was my way, if, if you want, which was not, not easy, because, you know, but I always try to stay free. In terms of, of, of、uh, finance, you know, and、uh, believe me, it was not,、uh, was not so, so easy. It took me、uh, approximately 30, 32 years to, for my watches to be recognized in the, in the second hand market.、Yeah? It's very simple. And today, you know, we have, we have a young generation, it's a bunch of new, new watchmakers, young, it's marvelous, you know, and、uh, I always say, Be careful, don't go too fast. Take it easy, you know. You have to erase some word from the vocabulary. You know. It's more weekends, holidays, and retirement. Okay? When this is done, you can start to work by, by yourself. And also try to avoid finance, you know, outside finance coming to your business because sooner or later you are dead. It's very interesting also because in a time when everyone was shifting towards industrial finishing,、yeah. You insisted more on the maximum hand finishing. Why was it so important to you? Bill is my, because, you know, he c o m e from my, my, my background. You know, during five years, I, I work,、uh, I restore、uh, pocket watches, completely pocket watches for auction. You know, it was for Gallery d o r o g i a n c e l which became、uh, Anticorum. And doing that job, you know, you learn a lot. By seeing so beautiful things. You know, all this mechanic, 90% of this mechanic were basically made here in the Valley de Dieu. You know, if you take a Vacheron or a Pate, if you take a Lange, Grossman, Asman,、yes. Mini Tripeter,、yes. Valley de Dieu. Victorian p i g e t Yeah, yeah, it looks cool and、yes. so on. If you take a Dent or a Benson,、uh, GW Benson in Dan, Mini Tripeter, Valley de Dieu again, you know. So, Because I like that, and I said that pushed me to, to try to perpetuate this type of thing. You know, I, I never invented anything. I just tried to carry, to carry what was、uh, started before me.、Yeah. Talk to me about the,、um, the foundation that you've created.、Uh, we said、uh, we have to, to help, to share, and、uh, this is how it, it, it started. And, and we said, okay, we're going to give the, the ignition. Uh, light, you, you, you know, by, by giving a, a watch, you know. That's why I gave, I gave the watch you have here. It's a, a unique、uh, simplicity. And、uh, 
It's going to be sold on auction with some different uh, object uh, like some painting and so on. And uh, we hope maybe some other brands will uh, will uh, will help. We that's all idea. Oh, actually, it's uh, watchmaking who reunited us. We went at the wrong subway station, and uh, we we went at the Louvre. And at that time, uh, there was a exposition, a watchmaking exposition. C'était uh, l'exposition de Belmontre. To find our way back, we have to take the lift to go on another um, subway. And uh, in that lift was a stranger. We were uh, three: my mother, me, and this stranger. Daniela, qui qui voit quelqu'un. And I turned myself to the stranger that I, as a kid, I thought it was beautiful. And I told him, "Est-ce que tu veux devenir mon papa?" Mm. Alors qu'elle avait à peine deux ans. I received the most amazing slap in the face that I will ever remember. Et c'est cet homme qui est devenu mon mari aujourd'hui. Je pense que mon Philippe Horloger m'attendait déjà. C'est ma fille qui m'a donné le mari que j'ai aujourd'hui. Et quand j'arrive dans la vie de Philippe, je découvre l'horlogerie. And I know that you've come to know both Leo, his, his wife, and Daniela very um, closely as a result of organizing this entire event. Tell me what you think of them and how Daniela is perfectly positioned and equipped to be the next generation to lead this wonderful company into the future. I mean, she's in a tough spot for sure. I mean, uh, uh, there's a lot of expectation around her. And I mean, just that name, Dufour to carry that name. I mean, that is quite a burden that you have on your shoulder, you know? And uh, she's doing it extremely implicated. I mean, she's extremely serious about what she does. And uh, uh, we've been following her for quite a while, uh, this uh, interaction between uh, her and her dad, uh, for years, actually. And it's really a beautiful story. We're huge fans of Daniela. Yeah. Uh, she is so elegant, so poised, so intelligent and so charismatic and also just a great watchmaker. Tell us about what she represents to the future of Philippe Dufour. Yeah, she's now uh, doing, uh, she's working on different simplicities, okay. I know she's working on something, but she she told me, I'm, I'm not going to tell you now, until it's, fi it's finished. So I'm, I'm waiting, and the idea is to make his own watch. And it's, she even have his own brand now, Daniela Dufo. Already, you know, she's ready for that. Wow. Because uh, it would be nice if she can uh, bring her idea not to make a copy of the father, you know what I mean? Of course. Uh, I would like to invite Nick Falks to join me now. Yeah. Uh, and I, just, I just came to listen rather than to kind of gate crash. Not so, at all, Nick. I mean, I mean, uh, so, it's, I mean it's, just great, it's just great to hear the the history of the stories you know yeah. and I love the fact that you came across this watch from the 1930s mm. and it's just about understanding the birthplace you talked about Victor and Piguet you talked about when you open a Benson watch yeah yeah and yeah. there it is you know yeah. and it's all valet de jeu it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's brilliant but yeah. you, you recently invited Daniela to your FT conference yes. uh, and apparently she was quite a, quite the hit I mean, she's but apart from being charming, and she dances very well. <laughs> yes. And the prince took to the dance floor afterwards, um, and she she was by far the queen of the dance floor at this thing. Yeah. But but I think it's also fascinating to see somebody first of all who is very much a person in their own right, as well as having an illustrious name, and also is so. I mean, she's very talented. One, one forgets, I mean, she's very talented, very self-assured, one forgets how young she is. Yeah. I mean, we just heard her singing this evening. I mean, that's, I mean, to do several things well is amazing. I can't do one thing to a mediocre level, but she is, she is quite a remarkable young woman. You must be very proud. Yeah, I am, I am, yeah. And she, I mean, she really did knock them dead at this, at this conference. And I mean, you had, you had some, you know, you had some very heavyweight industrialists. Uh, you had some very heavyweight academics, and mm. she, and she very much held her own in, in, in that crowd. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Philippe, happy birthday. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. Okay. Way, you're the best.
That's amazing. You know, your dad is, I would say, probably the greatest, like, iconic legend of independent watchmaking today. For you, what do you feel is your dad's contribution to watchmaking? How easy, as a person, you can be talented, but your persona is really important. He's still humble. You need to keep that humility. And my father actually don't think that he's famous. He thinks he's a lambda guy who wake up, go to the workshop, smoke the pipe, and do what he has to do because he wants to do it and because it's his passion. And sometimes he don't even realize that what he can, what he can say in watchmaking can have a real impact in the market. And there is no secret in watchmaking. We didn't even tell anything. It's all from our ancestors and we just want to to continue that because it has to be like that because this is the knowledge we have this is all we have and uh, if we don't continue that it will be vain and see how they started how it's going it's amazing and we have to continue that